in preparing this presentation, um, I thought quite deeply about how I could provoke action um, in the region, how we drive a much more connected, creative society and business, because we're all in the business of creativity, whether we're in media, data, or advertising. Um, and I think a really good place to start is the fact that if you look at a business like Dentsu, it's been driving innovation for 123 years. So an, an incredible um, journey, looking, being very pragmatic, very forward-looking. Um, and I think this exciting journey really defines how, um, how businesses can be sustainable in our industry. And um, many of our clients are focused on short-term gains, and there's a number of reasons for this, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. And I really hope you leave the session feeling inspired, motivated, and um, really keen to connect with people across the region um, to really drive a new agenda and a new voice, a new voice for Africa. And um, what is exciting, and I'm actually in Lagos at the moment is that we've had a 10-year partnership and joint venture with Media Fuse in Nigeria. It's our 10th birthday this year, which is absolutely incredible. Um, I'd just like to give a big shout out to um, the team in Nigeria. You're incredible and you continue to inspire me. So thank you very much for, for the partnership. So if we... so if you look at this beautiful work uh, from across our region, what you'll see is a truly collaborative group of people. We've tried to look at the barriers that um, are holding African creativity back and to really is trying, really trying to understand why it is um, that we are not winning at the same kind of scale as markets like India um, at international festivals. Um, why we are not consulted um, deeply by brands entering our region, really trying to get to the, the crux of what African creativity is um, and where it can go. The reality is, is that the biggest cultural revolution that is going to happen globally is going to come from this region. This market is scaling faster than any other market. It is expanding at a rate that actually is creating quite a lot of political tension between the West and the East. We need to make sure that what we project and place out there from an advertising and communication and a brand perspective is true to what we actually represent. And this is going to become incredibly important as we move forward um, with, the, with the likes of AI, et cetera. 
So I'm going to touch on that a little bit later, but the the environment that we are operating in is as hot as it is has I've actually never experienced a phase in advertising when the cultural political environment has been as hot as this. So it's volatile and what we are experiencing is that both consumers and our customers and clients um are under a lot of pressure. Recessions, inflations, Ghana has been operating at a 30% inflation, the political environment across multiple uh, countries, the number of elections that we are experiencing in Africa this year, war, social unrest globally and locally, energy deprivation. And this is true to most of our countries. And we're starting to see this actually happen um, in European markets as well. So really interesting space um, in, uh, from an energy perspective. And then huge supply chain uncertainty. Not being able to guarantee when product will be delivered. Uh, climate change driving um, huge uncertainty in every business, whether you're producing champagne or creating a motor vehicle, you are looking at supply chain uncertainty uh, very, very seriously. So as a result, our clients and our customers are looking for st strategic partnership. And if you're a consumer, you're looking for a partnership, you want to be aligned with brands that are actually engaging with you sincerely. Um, and, and I think this is the, the crux of of um, today's challenges from a marketing perspective. Innovation is critical. The one superpower that our industry has is that it can drive true meaningful change using that magic, that creativity to, to really drive a change in society. We need to be real problem solvers. I think the challenge that we run into in our industry that you know, if you're a carpenter, everything looks like it can be solved with a hammer and a nail. So at this point, the market dynamics are really, really colliding to create a unique moment. Social and cultural expansion, we see the expansion. And in fact, the, the you know, our, our European cult counterparts are stealing our design. They're stealing our uh, cultural nuances. Um, African music um, is taking off. It's the, our social and cultural expansion is moving worldwide, and we need to make sure that we actually drive that correctly. But what we are seeing is that our leaders in businesses are under pressure to do more with less. And I think a lot of this is driven by the requirements of more technology in businesses. We are seeing tech budgets moving from 3% of revenue up to 20, 30% of revenue. So technology is becoming a massive cost center in businesses. And that has to come from somewhere. So we are seeing clients think very carefully about where they're investing. And we just have to do more with less. At the same time, it's harder to be um, relevant with customers and consumers. And as I said to you, the sincerity of what brands do becomes really important. I had uh, a meeting with the CEO of a large telco recently. He said, why are young people so woke? You know, why would a beer drinker care about a sustainability? I mean, it's, uh, you know, that drinking occasion is filled with frivolity and sport. Um, and I said, well, actually, when you look at consumers, if you're looking at it in that way, you're looking at a 1% of that person's total environment or total brand, uh, brain uh, availability. Consumers are not just beer drinkers or just car drivers. So this relevance to consumers, their lifestyles, the way that they think, their fandoms is becoming more and more difficult and way more complex than it was in the past. And then lastly, generative AI will unlock personalization at scale and force brands to break down silos. And this is a big provocation that we make to clients. We say, guys, why do you have a separate sponsorship division, a separate um, digital division, a separate 
yes, there's a space for specialization, but unless you can drive radical collaboration in your business, you will never have a single view of your customer. So it's absolutely critical as we move forward to enable creativity, we are going to have to make sure that we combine these three things um, to drive um, a, a, an outcome for the business, right? And we're here to drive outcomes. So the best way to really predict um, the future is to create it. And I really do believe this um, because we often get very caught up in what is happening around us, what other people are saying. We spend a lot of time on LinkedIn obsessing what our competitors are doing. But the reality is, is that if you do more, you insight, if you're insightful and you do more, you will always win. So this is really critical. We have to stop being copiers in this region and looking to other spaces and environments um, for best practice. And we need to start driving that ourselves locally. So Dentsu's proposition and, and action or vision or kind of the rally call is to be at the forefront of people-centered transformations that shape society. People-centered, this space in terms of one-to-one -one communication is going to become exceptionally important to every single client. It's going to uh, reduce the silos in a business. It's something that we do very well as a business, really understanding audiences. Transformation, this is a critical space. Every single person, client that I speak to is going through a, a transformation internally as their bu businesses digitize. Whether you're a media owner um, or a client or in an agency, you are going through a massive transformation. And sometimes that can be scary. People don't like change. But I always say, if you don't like change, you will like irrelevance less, right? So these transformations that are happening are something that you need to play an active role in, um, especially when you start looking at how AI will transform businesses. And I'll talk quite a bit more about that later. And then lastly, that shapes society. We have to be responsible and accountable for how society views the world. We are an incredibly powerful group of people. How we shape society with communication is critical. And how we protect and drive the African voice, creativity, is 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 never been more important because our society is going to expand and you know, the, the effect, the ripple effect um, globally is going to be felt. So there's never been a time um, where shaping society could be more important. Um, recently, we did a piece of work. And why I'm really proud of this work is that this is true radical collaboration across multiple borders, um, driving local insight, working with both local and global clients, um, driving craft and really being brave and, and, and doing things that have never been done before. This work um, for, for Trophy has just recently won the um, ABN Bev um, Grand Prix for their uh, uh, internal awards. It's the first African award of this kind that they have received. And, and I think it takes real guts and courage um, to put a piece of work out uh, like this. So I'd really like to commend the team. Um, I think what is critical to understand about a piece of work like this is that the insight came from a Gen Zia. The fact that Nigerian people had never seen half of the artifact or 90% of the artifacts that actually uh, were removed from this country um, is something that needs to be um, out in the public space and needs to be discussed. And people need to be encouraged um, to actually demand the return of them. So what is important about this campaign, besides the results, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, but we received over 390,000 petitions. 
If you receive over 150,000 petitions, this has to be tabled at, at uh, Parliament in Britain. So needless to say, this, is, this journey is going to continue. And Reclaim Your DNA um, will have a, a massive impact going forward. What is very important about this piece of work and the bravery of the client is that the quality of the craft is exceptional. The attention to detail around how it was executed was brilliant. And this was working across multiple teams, as I said, to actually drive that level of craft. I often believe that ideas gain momentum as they, as they proceed throughout the actual creative process. And the collaboration of people driving an improvement, building on these ideas is absolutely critical. As a company, we don't um, value not invented here. And we need to see this coming from our clients as well. We need to be really collaborating in, in the space of the ideation, but also on the craft and the execution. You cannot elevate the craft of your business if you and the design elements and make sure that it looks as beautiful as this piece of work does if you don't invest wisely. And this is critical because as a region, we will not feature at global and international awards uh, shows or local shows for that matter unless we ensure the craft is of a very high standard. So I have a massive provocation to Nigerian clients to say, if you want to see these kind of results, don't nickel and dime your work, invest in the craft. I think what is critical about this piece of work is that it has really um, driven a change in society. And we've seen um, 72 of these artifacts uh, returned, not only due to this work, but certainly just due to the pressure being created um, um, by all of the momentum and the social media in the space. But as I said, at the end of the day, you can win awards and it's way harder to win awards on big brands um, because essentially you have so many gatekeepers and so many challenges around legal and compliance. Um, it's much easier to win if you're uh, driving a piece of NGO work. Um, but what counts is the fact that we drove growth. We drove 300% increase in market share. The brand health grew. The brand power um, increased. And the volumes increased. And we grew awareness year on year. So great work is the secret power that brands have. Why would you do harmful work when you can do incredible work and see these kind of results? So a real provocation for collaboration and, and bravery and investing behind your brand and your work. So I think what makes our space exciting is the borderless creativity that we are creating. The coming together of a number of different people across different regions. We are seeing centers of excellence coming out of markets like Senegal. Um, we are seeing incredible tech um, coming out of markets like Kenya. Um, these spaces talk to specializations that can really enhance creativity. Media owners and media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, um, Google, these guys are constantly driving innovation in their space. Media and creative need to be connecting besides borders, but internally as well, to drive creativity horizontally. The platforms are moving at a speed of, of it's just a speed of lightning. So we need to be sure that we are unpacking the capabilities of these platforms um, with our creative uh, partners. So I think where we're seeing a massive shift is how media is showing up. And this is a huge concern for many politicians, many governments, many regulators, because digital media 
is surpassing uh, traditional media. We have just seen the print media industry in South Africa collapse to below 5% of uh, investment. This is something that is happening globally. It is not something that is reversible, I don't believe, because what marketers are looking for is 100% accountability. If you're a traditional television station right now, you should be thinking about how you make your medium 100% accountable, running a monthly paper-based diary of when people are viewing it's just not good enough when you're competing with Facebook and Google. Many people say, well, actually, you know, how reliable is that? Because, you know, they're bots. Um, most digital media can be verified quite accurately. So that conversation is changing dramatically. The next big thing is addressable is a shoppability. We already seeing TikTok Live creating one of the biggest um, parts of their revenue base. TikTok Shop, massive uptake. We are seeing commerce players entering the market and we are seeing local clients driving that as well. And then lastly, addressable. We want to know that every single person that we are speaking to, we can clearly identify their behaviors, we understand exactly where we, they came into our, our consumer journey and we want to understand what other media and touch points they've engaged uh, with before making a purchase decision. Many, many global clients are moving to an 80% of spend in digital environments and spaces. Regulators are obviously incredibly nervous about the space because it does affect local media. But I do not believe that if I do believe that if local media don't start playing in the programmatic space, don't start being shoppable and accountable, we will not see any change. Clients want a hundred percent accountability, and that is what is driving uh, this massive shift. South Africa is facing an energy crisis, and it is getting darker every quarter. There's no doubt that load shedding is very disruptive, but it means that South Africans have to plan their lives carefully around ESCOM's schedules. This is people thinking, how can I afford a solar solution for my home? ABSA Home Loans has the product, but communicating the solution wouldn't be straightforward as load shedding has a significant effect on the channels in which we communicate. TV audiences, for example, are affected by up to 25%. A key issue for marketing professionals is therefore understanding how to adjust the current channel mix design to potentially mitigate the negative effect that load shedding has and ensure that campaign objectives are still met. A key element to consider is the spontaneity of the load shedding schedule. People are essentially shifting their viewership patterns by area every few hours. A key consideration is can I shift my investment in real time as the schedules change? This consideration formed the backbone of our proprietary load shedding media solution, Night Vision, built on a simple insight. When the power goes out, most of us reach for our phones as a source of entertainment due to the limited alternative options like TV. Through the use of real-time location data, load shedding schedules, and audience data, we developed a proprietary data solution to ensure ABSA's campaign performance wouldn't be as severely affected. Night Vision identifies dark zones and upweights media touch points not as impacted by load shedding in real time. Night Vision is a global media first and helps to solve a unique South African media challenge for ABSA, taking advantage of high attention moments and devices during an otherwise problematic scenario. out, phones up, solar power solutions, search. So what you're seeing is very technical solutions starting to be, become critical to solving these challenges. Night Vision is a product that is just about to be launched in Nigeria. We've actually um, done quite a bit of press on this. 
Um, we in this market, we've actually in Nigeria, we've actually developed our own power detection um, solution. So actually enhanced the product um, based on what we did in South Africa. Uh, we've just tested it with GoTV, a GoTV campaign uh, with exceptional results. So there'll be a lot more on this in the space. But what you can see is the challenges in terms of the real-time data that is coming in to our inside engines requires real technology to actually solve these problems because it's at such a large scale um, that we cannot manually uh, drive solutions of this nature. So our industry is becoming a blend of technology, creativity um, at, at a speed that we have never seen before. So I believe, truly believe that if we don't embrace the diversity of data science, data engineering, and how that comes to life in technology solutions, we will not be thinking as creative people horizontally. We will be thinking about creativity in silos. So a real provocation to the industry to, to be more agile in the space, to experiment and invest um, in products of this nature. So what we are seeing as a, um, a massive provocation and threat is that advertising tech is currently 30% of the tech spend in the top 50 companies globally. The biggest spend is obviously on security, security of data, um, cybersecurity and fraud is a massive threat, but advertising tech is 30% of tech spend. Why? Clients really want to understand the personal data sitting behind their customers. They want to reduce risk um, and uh, increase performance and effectiveness. They want to drive brand equity. Con connecting with consumers is, and building brand love is more important than it has ever been before because we have seen for the last five to six years a massive shift to focusing purely on short-term results. And it has a detrimental effect on many brands. So brand equity um, needs to be driven. And to do this, they need to do the performance elements at the lowest possible cost to free up opportunities for creating brand love and also innovating their own business, right? Critical to what is keeping most clients awake at night is connecting with um, culture and, and consumers. And they can only do this and stay ahead of these trends at scale in small pockets, which is, is really difficult using technology. The next space that clients are truly looking to leverage is new and exciting sales channels. And I believe that as agencies, this is firstly highly complex, highly data-driven, and hugely digital. And whilst many of us believe that in Africa, e-commerce is relatively small, I challenge every single person to open their WhatsApp phone, open their phone and look at WhatsApp um, and see what's actually happening. How many groups are you a part of that sell things, right? So I think we limit ourselves when we think about um, these sales channels because actually it's happening around us um, in, in a really agile manner. Loyalty, personalization, um, critical to our clients because they don't want to waste money on customers um, and communication um, and have multiple messages reaching customers that are totally irrelevant. So speaking back to that performance and effectiveness, personalization is really um, critical to most of our clients right now. Digital and tech partnerships. I've just um, given you an example of night vision. Um, but we are using um, data at the moment from many of our shopping retailers in South Africa, for example, to enhance our Facebook and Google campaigns. And it is driving a massive impact, uh, a massive upside for, for the clients that are using this. So this is not something that is, um, is going to change. Um, it's going to be ubiquitous across most markets in the region. And we are seeing this already in markets like Ghana and Kenya, um, where these digital and tech partnerships are playing a massive role 
um, in how we actually make decisions on a daily basis. And then I think what is very important is the internal integration of our clients um, themselves, making sure that there are no silos um, in the businesses, that in fact your data is joined up um, and that you can actually brief agencies in a really holistic fashion um, so that they can really give you total or holistic growth solutions. And then market and audience expansion. Every single person that we speak to today wants to know how they're going to grow. And in today's world, outside of Africa, no one is growing. It's, it's, it, the, the world is saturated. So every single client is concerned about growth. And as a business, we are here to deliver that growth sprinkled with innovation to drive uh, effectiveness. So a lot of people are talking about AI at the moment. And I would like to be a little bit provocative and say, we need to combine AI with African intelligence. Many regulators are moving to restrict the use of AI. The reality is that AI is being adopted by countries that have older uh, populations and expensive workforces. They are looking to use AI to uh, drive down cost, but also to provide a um, certain level of ease and, and uh, utility for older uh, consumers. If we, as the African region, pull back from using AI, we will not be represented in the solutions that, um, that it puts forward. So somehow we need to find a balance of how we integrate AI into, um, into our daily lives. But if we do not get into the space and get involved and truly engage and build products and services on top of this as a region, we will fall further behind. It's not a kind of should we, how we, we have to do this. It's not um, something that we should be delaying or, um, or um, d uh, not investing in. And there is a way to do this um, with uh, consideration and security. So biggest provocation to regulators in the advertising industry is please don't limit the use of AI. We need to make sure that we fully represent it in here or every single piece of work that comes out uh, globally will leave us out. So this AI is already being used in our businesses every single day. It's, it's, it's there already. Um, products like TikTok, Google, Meta, you've just seen if you open your WhatsApp, you'll see that there's a new Meta AI button. You can ask it anything. Um, Microsoft Bing is starting to make a, um, um, a reappearance. Our clients are using products like Salesforce to actually collect their customer data, or they're using Azure to actually store that data. Um, but all, all of these spaces are driven by AI already. So it's it's not as though <laughs> we, we are not, um, it's not in our lives already, it is. We just need to move faster. We need to be building products on top of these platforms that really represent our region um, and can lift our voice um, in the space or we will be left behind. So the next um, exciting space is the space of creators and influencers. And I think this poses quite a risk to our industry if we don't embrace it and uh, drive the process. Recently, we set up a business in Ghana um, we interviewed many people in the industry. Uh, we wanted to create a business built on sort of a content background. And we interviewed young creative people from the whole industry. And what really shocked me was that not one person we interviewed could tell me the name of a creative director in the industry that they aspired to becoming. They could name influencers, they could name filmmakers, 
They could name content makers, um, but or musicians or artists, but not one person aspired to being a traditional creative director. So this space is moving so rapidly. The um, the shoppable nature of this content is going to accelerate. How we link creators and influence directly to a sale is going to become critical. Um, and it's it's going to be moving beyond, uh, it's going to scale. So I think what is critical is to think about the technology that underpins this. You know, an agency cannot have 2,000 creators invoicing us uh, for $50. It's, it's impossible. We cannot load those people onto our current infrastructure and systems. The scale of it is, is massive and the, the actual transaction numbers are so small. So this space has to be driven by technology. We need control over what creators and influencers are saying about our brands. Uh, we need to be able to track budgets in the space and we need to be able to track performance. And I said, ultimately, how that links back to a sale. So technology is going to drive the space. At the moment, we cannot see the difference between, you know, content on TikTok, AI, um, uh, Meta or Google together. Um, obviously, we are building dashboards that deliver that, but it is um, still quite analog in terms of what is required. So I can really say that the next big space that we're going to see technology moving um, at a rapid space um, is, is in this influencer and creator space because we absolutely need control. We need to be ensuring that what is out there about our brands uh, is true to our brand, but also how do we manage you know, 10,000 micro influencers invoicing us simultaneously. So a massive um, area for developments in our region. Speaking about um, shopability, um, we've made a considerable effort to, to really drive retail media where the real world intersects with the digital world. Um, Amazon has just launched um, in South Africa. Um, it comes with incredible search capabilities. We are already seeing on a daily basis between Timu and Sheen 100,000 packages being delivered daily. Uh, we are not seeing those kinds of volumes coming out of local fashion retailers. So this sense of borderless shopping is nothing new to Ni the Nigerian market, for example. Um, so this commerce space is becoming more and more complex. Um, it is becoming a real area of specialization. It requires qualification, you know, to really um, get the best out of many of these digital uh, channels. You have to be qualified as an Amazon um, specialist. So a real area of learning and and certainly um, a space for rapid change. And what we are seeing on the right-hand side is many of our um, uh, brands starting to develop their direct, their own direct-to-customer uh, sales platforms. Uh, Tada is a NB, AB and BIV uh, product. Um, and, and this is ubiquitous. We're starting to see this coming through from many of our fashion and beauty uh, brands. Um, and it's driving huge incremental sales for their businesses. Um, it's it's a, um, a space where you can link content directly to the sale of a product. So many, many of our clients are looking at the space in all sincerity because it is a way for them to actually measure a direct correlation between the content created um, and the, the sales result. So a space that I would encourage creatives to really, really understand um, in a borderless uh, fashion. So that is going to be a data race, um, essentially. The more information we have about people's, cust uh, people's shopping habits, the more it will inform how we speak to them 
It will drive automation and creativity. We are already seeing this. Um, things like banners, um, emailers, et cetera, are going to be automated um, a great deal more. Um, and, and the data that comes out of these shopping environments will inform where we invest, um, how we speak to people um, to convert uh, sales. So a, a massive area of growth uh, for the entire industry and a, and a huge learning space. So we've spoken a lot about the kind of technology and what is driving our industry and what I think is going to really set our region free to be more creative um, and to be more um, accountable. But I wanted to talk a little bit more just about the connected uh, culture across the region. Um, the fact that Nigerians were claiming ownership of Tyler, um, our lovely um, uh, Tyler from South Africa, is amazing. It just means that as a region, we are starting to see um, a true appreciation of the success of people that are that are coming out of this region, um, and the fashion brands, the music, the um, food, um, uh, sort of you can see the development of food and and um, food culture happening. The fact that, you know, we are investing in those spaces um, gives me a huge hope that we will drive um, a culture and be totally connected to it going forward. And that's why I said, you know, getting involved in – AI right at this stage is highly critical. But it's very difficult to be connected to culture every day. And yes, we can track YouTube, we can um, do studies, we can go out onto the streets or into stores um, and, and bars and talk to people. But fandoms and people in people's interest groups are becoming so diverse. Um, that once again, um, we do need technology um, to actually drive this. But there is still nothing that beats local insight. Um, we recently launched a campaign for TikTok South Africa to build uh, trust locally. Um, amazing piece of work and a, and a huge amount of results uh, for the brand. But but truly born out of local insight. So this local niched um, fandom space is just going to expand and accelerate further. And if you're looking at um, platforms like TikTok, whilst they may not be commercialized in many countries, if you look at a market like Kenya, Kenya has the highest engagement rate on TikTok globally. So this space is going to be moving moving at at the at speed of lightning, as I said. And the number of communities that are already sitting in these spaces are hugely diverse um, and, and are ready to be tapped into. So I really believe that we need to be at the forefront of culture every single day. We need to be looking at the, the data. Um, underpinned by by technology. So my provocation is don't wait for global systems. Don't wait for um, someone to bring tech and tools. Get involved, experiment, try things. Um, think about local challenges like, you know, <laughs> lack of energy, um, and the the situation that is creating for television audiences. I mean, television audiences are declining by thirty percent because of energy the energy crisis, and with the coupled with the cost of diesel, we are seeing a massive um, drop in these audiences on television and radio. So start thinking about local solutions that can actually solve local problems, um, and you and and get involved. Don't sit back and wait. So. All of this is hugely complex. And essentially what creativity needs to do is it needs to take that complexity and make it really simple. 
simple for our clients and simple for consumers and simple for our people within the industry. And we can only do that really with, with radical collaboration. So if you're lying up awake at night and you're thinking about the ad tech investment and how clients are moving a lot of digital spend into their own organizations, you need to start understanding these uh, 10 points and why this is happening. Um, agencies need to move faster in the space and truly be, need to be truly non-siloed in their thinking um, and ensure that even though the clients have a, a great deal of silos in their own businesses, that we can help them um, bridge those gaps. Advertising tech, the investment in the space is happening because there is a great deal of um, wastage. There's a huge amount of unaccountable or lack of accountability, certainly from a traditional media space that our clients are hugely concerned about. Um, so we need to embrace this and we need to have solutions uh, to take to them. So at Dentsu, we obviously have a number of brands that are specialists um, in their space, um, ranging from creative to production, um, to media and to CXM. Um, our challenge generally as agencies is to work together to create one client p and um, and bringing these incredible specialists together um, is, is critical to us as Dentsu and I'm sure every single agency is thinking about how they can actually provide holistic uh, solutions to clients. Every single person in your business should be thinking about widening their skill base, what they could be doing to deliver um, AI-driven uh, solutions, how this could free your business up to spend more time thinking and um, ideating and innovating as opposed to doing. Um, so it's not, it doesn't really matter how you enter a relationship with an agency group. What really matters is how collaborative they are and how they pull together to provide you uh, with a, to a total and holistic solution. So thank you very much uh, for listening. Um, and I hope that I've given everybody some real uh, food for thought and a provocation um, to step change what we're doing as a region. We need to we need to lead the world, and we're going to be asked to lead the world as African culture dominates um, the world in the next fifty years. No one is going to grow faster than us. Um, so, thank you very much for listening.